Today I'll be going over one of the baseline MSRP 3080 cards that somehow seems to be flying under the YouTube radar, the MSI Ventus 3X, which means that you will have to set aside around $699 or 720 euros to get one of these, if you can get one at all, because Nvidia is still struggling to get on top of those nasty shortages. But what I think is very interesting here is that all manufacturers are usually very happy to show off their super high-end flagship models, but usually very hesitant to send out their cheaper models like this one, because if they show off their very best, the rest will sell too. So if we take MSI for example, they are building their GPU reputation with their high-end Gaming X Trio model and then counting on that reputation to automatically sell all the cheaper cards as well. And since I managed to get my hands on this one, uh, which is supposed to be the cheapest MSI RTX 3080 model, I thought it would be very interesting to see what the actual difference between the two cards is and what are you actually losing by sticking to the MSRP and skipping on the high-end model. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. I'm gonna begin with a super quick summary of what you should expect from an RTX 3080 chip in general, but if you want to get a bit more details about how this chip compared to other chips, I will leave a link to my Founders Edition review somewhere up here, as well as in the description down below. Now, on a 4K resolution, you can play every single game above 60 FPS at high settings and with RTX on, if the game supports it, that is. And being able to run AAA titles at 4K resolution and high frame rates is just something we haven't seen before, and it is a huge step forward for high end PC gaming in general. On 1440p, this card makes great use of those high refresh rate monitors, so expect to play every game at high settings and high refresh rates at least for the next couple of years. On 1080p, the RTX 3080 is just an overkill, it works beyond great but you just don't need this much power to play comfortably on 1080p resolution. It would make sense to get it if you are a very competitive player with a 240Hz or an even faster 360Hz monitor where every single frame matters and can be a difference between winning or losing a game, but that's pretty much it. But let's look at Aventus here. It might be one of the cheaper 3080s, but I really think it's a very good looking card. It gives off a nice first impression with those three fans and a big heatsink, and I always like that black-gray color scheme that just goes really well with your other hardware. The backplate is very sleek with that uh, brushed aluminum geometric look, and it's made out of that same graphene plastic combination as we've seen on the Gaming X Trio. It is about 30 centimeters long, 12 centimeters deep, and six centimeters high, making it slightly smaller than the Gaming X Trio, which might be an advantage if you are aiming at a mid-size or a smaller ITX build. Since we are looking at a cheaper MSRP card, I don't think that looks are that important, but it definitely doesn't hurt that MSI kind of nailed the visuals here, in my opinion at least. But the Ventus does seem to cut costs when it comes to some of the extra features on the card. Uh, it does include a fan stop mode, so the fans will stop in idle and light use and keep your GPU silent completely, but there is no dual BIOS, uh, there are no extra headers and there is no RGB at all, you know, which might be a good thing for some of you, I guess. The connection layout is also standard with three Display 1.4 connections and a single HDMI 2.1 port. If you do need more, there are a couple of other cards in the market that offer an extra HDMI port, like the Tough Gaming from Asus or Gigabyte cards. You'll need two typical 8-pin headers to power it up, which I really prefer over the three-header setup of the Gaming X Trio, and that's pretty much it. Now, without any real features to talk about, it all comes down to performance and overall performance is actually pretty good. It is just trailing the four other RTX 3080 cards in Time Spy, but when looking at a couple of games actually, it manages to perform basically within margin of error of the more expensive Gaming X Trio, Gigabyte Gaming OC or Tough Gaming OC. So basically, if you're just gaming, you really won't feel the performance and speed difference between any of these cards in the graphs. 
and that makes even more sense when we look at the boost speeds, uh, where most of these cards just show roughly the same average clock speed in pretty much every game. Now, years ago, cheaper GPU versions uh, could be much slower than factory OC models, but nowadays, Nvidia's GPU boost feature basically turns almost every card into an OC version by itself, meaning that as long as it doesn't get too hot and there is room within the power budget, you'll end up with a nice boost on your card. And all cards except for the Founders Edition actually stayed within the Nvidia reference TDP of 320 watts. Now, like with the Gaming X Trio, MSI's focus is more on lower noise levels than on lower temperatures, and you will barely hear it while gaming. It is noticeably quieter than the Founders Edition, and with lower temperatures as well, but it does run a bit warmer than the Asus and Gigabyte cards on their default BIOS. When I set each of the cards to 40 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, we can get a better look at the efficiency of the coolers, and here, Ventus is a bit behind of the fancier partner cards, but it's again better than the Founders Edition and that one was already considered completely fine. So, what is the difference of picking the cheaper Ventus over the high-end models? Now, you will lose a little bit of efficiency of your cooler and you will lose some of the extra features like dual bias support or RGB. And those are the things that, you know, many people don't really care about, but when it comes to the actual gaming performance, there is basically no real difference between any of these cards. That really makes me wonder why some of these brands are so worried about showing off their cheaper cards. Uh, maybe they're just being extra careful and uh, very competitive on launch days, uh, or maybe they're just worried about getting punished for the cooler being not as efficient as, as some other high-end card or something. Because in my opinion, if you're looking to get an RTX 3080 and you don't want to pay for fancy features that you're not gonna care about nor use, this is actually a great car to get. It is as fast as the others, it runs cool enough, it is really quiet and it should look great in any non-RGB build. I mean, 3080 cards are expensive enough as it is and this one just shows that you don't have to pay over the MSRP to get that same gaming experience as with the high-end cards. Now that's it for today, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Tech Testers to never miss an upload. See you in the next one, guys, bye.